up, everybody? This is your boy, Shaper Speaks. Let's get right into it, y'all. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, season one, episode four, the whole world is watching. I've been wondering why it's entitled that. And I learned at the very end why it's titled that. Because John Block is fucking crazy. Pardon my language. Just that that's the one time I'll say that word and curse throughout the entire video. Um, in this, <clears throat> excuse me, in this video, in this whole episode, actually, um, I've learned a lot about our titular characters as well as who they're connected to, who they're connected with. And then also just, uh, again, you learn about Carly's Morgenthau's whole premise, her manifesto, her entire ideology. You know, essentially, they always say the the bad guys in every movie, you know, for the most most time are always correct. In fact, so much so you even hear Zemo who slips away not once, but twice. And it pisses me off how they did this. But... He mentions how pretty much having, you know, people like the Avengers and people like to having the Super Soldier Serum is what leads to having people like the Avengers, is what leads to having people things like Ultron, you know, how they ended up also always being correct. Um, you can't have people um, like Carly Morgenthau running around, her and her band of misfits, because, because Sam thought, felt like she was still capable of being... Uh, you know, redeemable. He felt like she was capable of being redeemable, being understood, and so forth. And Zemo's just like, no, you can't hold out hope for someone like that. She's already gone. I mean, she bombed people the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? And so you can't help, you can't beat the man there in that point, in that regard. However, you got to remember something. Zemo is going to, he's a, he's a creature of habit. He's, he, leopards never change their spots. And so you see they get together for, uh, Donia Bandani's uh, memorial service. I mean, they literally see the conversation between Sam and Carly right where the moment's body is right there. You know, she's laying herself to rest right there. They're literally having a conversation with her body in the vicinity that close. And everything was going really well. Everything was really going PT King. Even the Norma Laja came through and said, look, you got eight hours, Barnes, to get things right. They call him White Wolf, obviously. We even get a touching way of how um, how Ayo, how Ayo actually was able to actually get rid of the program of the Super Soldier Serum. Um, I'm sorry, the Winter Soldier uh, protocol out of Bucky's brain. You know, you see Bucky literally crying and having flashbacks of all the damage he's done. You know, we see eclipse from Civil War. Um, yeah, mainly just from Civil War. You know, him just causing destruction. And he's crying because he's like, it's not going to work because he can feel you know, those little impulses creeping in, you know, it made, it almost made me, it almost made me cry, honestly, because the man was suffering, you know, he was, it was really something that, you know, it, he always struggled at, he never thought he could have control over. And so when the door with Marlaje and Io showed up to get uh, Zemo, it got real. And I always hate how that happens because Zemo's nursing a headache after getting hit in the damn head by that Captain America shield after the whole Piasco with Carly the first damn time did not go right. It made Carly feel like she couldn't trust Sam. And, you know, because John Walker's punk ass got impatient. <laughs> so, um, and I know I just broke my own damn rule, but I'm sorry. But YouTube, please don't get mad at me for that. It still is kid friendly, trust me. But, um, yeah, you know, you see Lamar actually, unfortunately, gets killed, you know, in the heat of battle, you know, everything was going really well, you know. And Carly ends up punching him really hard, so hard to the point where he, Lamar flies back and he cracks, he severs his spine on a point of impact on one of the pillars. And with that being said, seeing his, his right-hand man, his best friend, get killed right in front of him, you know, because he's been held up by uh, Povich, Dovich, uh, who we actually ends up killing at the very end of the episode with the shield itself in front of everybody to see. But the camera's out, everyone got to see it, even including Sam and Bucky. And, you know... Zemo already, you know, pretty much just got up out of there, you know, secret style, you know what I'm saying? And so, and that was just crazy to me because once again, Zemo's tactics worked once again. He even told the little kids not to even trust him, the same and Bucky. And they were trying to figure out where the young Madonna's memorial was, you know what I'm saying? And shout out, shout out to Sharon Carter too because I feel like Sharon Carter knew that John Walker was fucking crazy because she literally kept a tracker on him. And she said, oh, there you go, John Walker. Because she knew that John was not going to be patient. She knew that John was losing his patience with the same Buffy doing that thing. And so now, 
you know, as Zemo destroys the Super Soldier Serum, the very last of it, I believe, you see John look over and he sees a vial of it. Mind you, um, Dovich tries to go find the vials, whatever's left of them, because Zemo pulled up and shot Carly, you know, I'm thinking, oh crap, he's about to X her out. Nope. He destroys all the serums, and then all of a sudden, but except I want to bother, I roll to the side. I don't know how Zemo missed that one right there. Must have been in the heat of the moment trying to kill Carly, not to notice it. But John Walker ends up seeing that vial and destroying it, you know? And it really gets at me because I'm like, bro, I knew he was going to be so corrupted by, you know, his patriotism, his frustrations, and so forth, that he would be end up taking it. Even that's why he had pathology. That's why. And this is where you see the flip side of the coin. You see, first, Zemo ask Sam, would, hypothetically speaking, had you, would you have taken the serum? Sam immediately says no. And Zemo found that impressive because most men will fall under the temptation uh, of taking something that enhances them. Inferiority, you know, insecurity, ego, you know, the whole gist. And so John Walker asked Lamar that before he was killed. He said, hey, man, uh, would you have... I'm taking the serum if we had it back then. Because even Lamar was like, man, I wish we had had that back then. So then that way, um, and back in Afghanistan, so then that way we would have been saved so many lives. And John Walker goes, yeah. You know, and because it makes you think, oh, holy crap. He was thinking about it. He was moralistically, he wasn't thinking, okay, would it, would it corrupt my moral compass? Who I am? And Lamar goes, I think power, you know, it just enhances essentially who you really are. And I feel like, him with, you know, John taking that serum right when he was being attacked by the super soldiers, uh, by the Flag Smashers, that, you know, and then also seeing Labar killed, that infuriated him. Obviously, he's in a state of grief, and now that he's taking that serum, courtesy of Wilfred uh, Nagel, that's more stabilized. It, 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 the user can consume the serum as fast as it, it doesn't provide any damage. You know? <clears throat> because Zemo, like I said, he felt like the serum only corrupted people, you know. But like Lamar says, I think power corrupts anybody. If not necessarily corrupts anybody, but it actually amplifies who a person already is. And so I'm looking forward to see what happens next episode, man, because this is about to get real, y'all. Peace and love.